Greetings, cyber truckers and citizens of the internet. This is Red Dog coming at you from the awesome world of Euro Truck Simulator 2 in this Let's Play series. In the previous episode, we managed to buy ourselves a brand new truck with a loan from the bank and we named that truck Maximus. Unfortunately, right out the bat, we did 3% damage to our brand new truck by driving into a freaking wall. And that totally, totally sucks. But guys, in this episode, we are going to continue on our delivery of cement. So let's get behind the freaking wheel and let's get going. We still have, um, I think... Yeah, we still have 145 miles to go on this delivery, so we still have a lot of freaking driving to do. But you know what? I'm very, very happy with that. It is a beautiful day outside. Let's stick our head outside the window, and uh, we can see that it is looking kind of sweet around here, man. Looking. Oh, oh, my bad. Sorry, sorry, everybody. <laughs> um, so we are. We've got about 144 miles to go, guys, and we have got a full tank of gas. We've got 3% damage to this truck, unfortunately, and I think maybe that is affecting the performance of the truck. The truck does seem to be driving quite slowly, um, either because it's a really small truck, obviously, you know, we haven't been able to afford a bigger truck, and of course we are pulling a giant ass load of incredibly heavy cement. Um, so that could be the reason why, why our truck can't get above like, I don't know, <laughs> 50 miles an hour really I mean we're sort of hovering around 40 miles an hour but this is our very first truck so you know we can't expect the best freaking truck right off the bat and we haven't even done any upgrades or anything to this bad boy so you know what um, I'm, we're just gonna have to suck it up man we're gonna drive at 40 miles an hour it's gonna take three hours and 32 in-game minutes to get to our location we've got 135 miles to go and you know what guys We've got the sun on our face, we've got music coming out of our radio, and you know, we're just, we're on a road trip right now, man. We're just chilling, Cyberdog packed together in this truck. Um, I don't know how many of you are in here, but at least 5,000. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how you're all fitting in here, but you know, welcome. And uh, you know, let's do this, man. Let's just hit the highway. Let's just freaking cruise along. Let's uh, try not commit any offenses of any kind, pay our freaking tolls, and just keep in our lane. And let's just have a, a talk, shall we, guys? Let's, let's, I don't know, let's reminisce a bit. Um, I was thinking uh, earlier today about a question that one of you cyber dogs asked me in the previous episode of this game. And one of you guys asked me about why and how I came to live in Europe from South Africa. And what was I doing before I came uh, to live in London in, in you know, uh, about seven years ago? And you know what? That's a really, really good question because I kind of feel like my life is um ooh, we got a turn here we got a turn here oh wait do i have to go up there no oh no we don't have to turn okay Woo. um this this thing just does like a loop okay <laughs> sweet um and the rain has started so we need to start our windscreen wipers p oh my bad all right there we go um anyway guys like i was saying i kind of feel like my life has two parts to it, right? The first part of my life was in South Africa, a very, very different place to Europe, a very, very different world, a very, very different life to what I have now. And of course, the second life, the second part of my life started when I came to, to London. And, um, you know, it's, it's actually quite crazy because South Africa is very, very far away from everywhere on this planet. It is literally at the tip of Africa, for those of you guys who don't know. And uh, that is a butt long way away from Europe, from America, from the East, from anywhere in the world, really. And when you live in South Africa, you know, you live a, quite an isolated life. And we need to get out of this lane. Um, and everything that you know is, is, is in South Africa. You know, you, you have everything that you need. You have, you have cinema, you have internet, you have the, the city, you have shopping, you have restaurants. You have everything that you, you could want. So really, you don't ever really think about anything else outside of South Africa. You don't think about, you know, what could be in Europe. You don't think about what could be in America because you see it on TV, you know. A lot of South Africans that I talk to say, we're happy in South Africa. If we want to see stuff in America, we just watch TV and we can see the Eiffel Tower. And we, I mean, that, that's in, in Paris. Uh, we can see the Statue of Liberty or the, you know, like, uh, oh, yeah, you are kidding me. We just got to find. Oh. And you know why? That's because I noobed out about the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> but anyway, guys, you know, I was living in a city in South Africa called Cape Town. And Cape Town is on 
the, the beach. It's actually right at the very end of South Africa. And um, it's basically the colony that first started South Africa as a country. Um, it's been colonized by both the Dutch, by the Kingdom of the Netherlands, and by the British. And uh, the great trek that, that pushed the settlers all the way north in South Africa to go find gold and started the, the, the whole gold rush in South Africa. You guys might know about something called the Kruger Rand, which is a solid gold coin. Um, that all sort of started from Cape Town because Cape Town became the link between the West and the East and it was sort of the main halfway point for the Dutch East Indi India Company between Europe and India. Um, just a little bit of... I, I think that's right, I could be wrong, but that's a little, just a little bit of history over there. <laughs> but I was living in Cape Town and it's a really beautiful, beautiful, it's a beautiful city, man. It's an absolutely awesome city. And I finished university, I finished studying university and, and I studied journalism and English at university and graphic design, in fact. And uh, I went to Cape Town to try and get into media or to try and get into, uh, you know, some sort of media production job. I wanted to be a writer or, or a designer or something along those lines. And um, I ended up working as a journalist for a while. But before I, I worked as a journalist, it took me about a year to get that, that job, that real job. Before I was working as a journalist, I worked as a barman in a pool bar in Cape Town. And I used to also work in an internet cafe in Cape Town. So I, was, I, I, I held on two jobs in that city. And I used to work in the internet cafe from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. And it was an awesome job. All I used to do was play like uh, Warcraft 3. <laughs> and World of Warcraft and, and I just used to sit there and play games and you know just take money from other people who wanted to play games so that was cool <laughs> and uh, then from 5 p.m. till 5 a.m. I used to go work at the bar so I used to do a 12-hour shift at the bar and uh, then I used to get a, a few hours sleep and go back to the internet cafe and work there I was much younger back in those days you know when you're young you have a lot of energy and holding down two jobs and you know five hours of sleep a night you don't really need more than that, to be honest. You've you, you got a lot of energy, you've got a lot of spunk. And any, anyone who complains about holding down two jobs, don't be a freaking butthole, man. Do it while you're young. Make a lot of money. You know, it's all cash in hand. It's awesome, man. You don't have to pay taxes. You can spend that sweet-ass cash on what you want. And it is awesome. Um, but I had a really, really sweet time in, in, in Cape Town. And eventually, I started to make enough money to, to live in an apartment. And I moved into an apartment with my, my best friend. And it was an awesome apartment that looked over the city of Cape Town. And uh, I, I loved it there, man. We lived there for about a year and a half, I think. And it was a, a really, really good time. Uh, we had everything that we needed because my, my mama doll was really, really nice to me. When, when we moved into that apartment, she offered to, to furnish the apartment with some um, with couches, with a fridge, with beds, with tables, with desks, with everything, man. And uh, mama doll really helped me out actually and she you know she drove all of these um these furnishings down for me from the city that she lived in and she lived in johannesburg which is the capital of south africa well kind of the capital of south africa <laughs> it's a long story um but she put all of that stuff on a on a truck for me and sent it to me in cape town and we had a really really nice furnished apartment we had a really really sweet time living in cape town but you know i, I was working in a, as a journalist for about a year and a half while i was living in that apartment and I just, I don't know, man, something was just calling to me, you know. All of my friends were really in, happy in South Africa. They were really content. They were really settled and everything. And they, they didn't really think about leaving. But something in me, man, some, some, there was a bird inside my ass that wanted to get out. <laughs> um, a weird metaphor, but that's, that's what it was. And I, I really, I just, I wanted to see the world, you know. I, I wanted to go to a place where internet was really fast, where technology was booming, where it didn't, you know, in South Africa we did get iPhones and all of that stuff, but only much later after the rest of the world. And I wanted to be at the, the cutting edge, man. I wanted to be at the forefront um, of technology. And at, because I've always been a gamer, I've always been in, interested in technology. I've always, always been into, you know, the latest, the latest gadgets and the latest freaking games and the latest technology. And I've always built my own computers and everything. So, you know, something really called to me, man. And the, the world called to me and I wanted to get out. And so eventually what, you know, I did is I spoke to my dad and I said to him, look, you know, I'm, I am happy in my job and I, I, I really like my life in Cape Town, but I know there's something more out there, man. I want to go and find something more. I want to explore. I want to meet people from other countries. I want to experience what it's like to live in a first world country and to, you know, have a, have a metro, man, and have amazing public transport and, <laughs> you know, and, and be able to walk on the streets and, and 
just experience a life that I've never experienced before. And, and my dad said to me, well, why don't you go live in London, man? You know, you've got a European passport. You can get into Europe really easily. Why don't you just go and, and live in London for a couple years, see what it's like, experience the world, and then come back to South Africa? And I was like, you know, that sounds really awesome, the part about exploring the world, and uh, but the part about coming back to South Africa, I don't know about that. <laughs> but definitely, I want to go and explore. So what I did is literally woke up one morning and uh, quit my job, sold all of my stuff, told my best friend, sorry dude, I'm, uh, I'm leaving, you're gonna have to find a new place to live, my bad. <laughs> Sold all of my stuff, sold my car, sold Maximus. That was a sad day, man. I'll tell you guys the story about that one day. Uh, the day I sold Maximus, man. That was so good. It brings a tear to my eye right now, just thinking about it. But I sold everything and, um, you know, my, my, my dad also gave me a little bit of money. And I bought a ticket to come to London. And I went and stayed with my parents for a few weeks before I came. You know, a last sort of, a last three or four weeks I to spend with my family before I came to Europe. You know, something inside me always, always told me that I, I probably wasn't going to be going to back back to South Africa. That I was probably going to start a new life here in Europe, in London, um, or you know, maybe one day I would end up in America or wherever. Um, and so those last few weeks that I spent with my folks were really important to me. They were, you know, they were a really good time. I'll never forget them. And you know, I remember going to the airport with my family, with my mum and my dad and my little brother, and my other brother. Um, oh. No one get another fine? <laughs> um, and anyway, and I, I, I can, you know, it's so weird. I can remember every single, basically every single minute of that drive, being in the car with my family, driving all the way to the airport. I, I can remember it so clearly, um, knowing, you know, I, I guess it was quite a traumatic time, you know, knowing that this was goodbye, you know, that, uh, and I mean, I mean, it's not like as dramatic as it used to be. You know, you, you used to get on a boat and uh, go to another continent and never see your family again. I mean, I'm only 10 hours away from my family, so it's not that bad, but you know, it, it, felt, it felt pretty hectic. Um, and it was very intense. And anyway, all, all I had was a suitcase of stuff and uh, some cash. And I landed in London and um, I, I remember landing at Heathrow. And the only person that I knew in London was my ex-girlfriend from way back. Uh, from from the university days and I hadn't seen her in probably like five years or something but we were really good buddies actually and uh, you know we sort of kept in touch after after a few years we, we got we, we got back in touch and we sort of you know we spoke to each other on Gmail and we emailed each other occasionally and, and we you know we stayed buddies and when when she finished university with me she came straight to London and she'd been living there for a few years before I arrived and I emailed her before I left and I said, hey, what's, what's crackling? I'm, uh, I'm coming to London, like, um, you know, any advice? And she was actually really kind and, and she said to me, well, well you know, you're, you're, happy, you're, uh, you're welcome to come in and stay with me in my flat. I've got a, 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 a spare bed here that you can sleep in and uh, you can come and stay here a, 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 until you find a job. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm really happy for you to, to do that. And I was like, you know what, that is actually really awesome because I'm going to London and at least I have a friend there at least I, I, I know somebody. At that stage, none of, no one that I knew had actually gone to London yet, except for her. And uh, I remember getting to Heathrow and, and I, I, I texted her and I said, I'm here, what do I do, help? <laughs> oh, we actually have to turn here. Um, and she just texted me back and said, I'm working, take the tube to this station and take the, uh, I, I can't remember what bus it was, take the N25 bus to this bus stop and then my flat is on this road and I was like dude I'm from South Africa man I have no idea how a tube works how a bus works I mean you know I'm, I'm like basically a farmer in a city I have no idea what's going on here and uh, I was uh, I was terrified man it was it was crazy but I got there and, and um, I went to the information desk at, at, at the, the underground uh, station in Heathrow and a really really nice lady helped me out she gave me my you know, my metro tickets, she gave me everything that I needed to use, uh, the, the, the tube system and the buses. And, you know, I said to her, look, I need to get to this place. Um, how do I get there? And she wrote on a piece of paper, she said, okay, you take... <sighs> Whoa, I just yawned. <laughs> that was weird. Uh, you know, you take this tube to this station, then you take this bus, then you walk. And she drew me a little map and everything. And basically I went to my, my ex-girlfriend or my, my friend's flat um, using this this piece of paper in this map 
and somehow I act woke. Whoa, 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 going way too fast around here. Woo. Um, and somehow I actually got there okay. Um, I still to this day don't know how I found it. But I'll never forget, it was a really cold day. Uh, really, really cold. It was a cold that I'd actually never felt before because uh, I, I, it, was in, it was in February, I think, that I went, that I came to London. It was freezing, man. But it was an absolutely beautiful, crystal clear blue day in, in London. And there was a little bit of snow and frost on the ground. And I remember just dragging my suitcase up the road toward my friend's flat and uh, breathing smoke out of my mouth and, and feeling the sun on my face and just thinking, man, this is a new life. This is a brand new beginning, man. This is, this is so freaking sweet. I am so happy. And uh, she had left her keys under her doormat, which to me was completely crazy, man. In South Africa, we would never leave our keys outside for, you know, perhaps a robber or a burglar to find. But, you know, this is London, man. <laughs> you can get away with that sort of thing. And I went into a flat. Dude, I know I'm tired. Relax. <laughs> um, I went into a flat and um, I just sat down on, on the couch, turned on her TV and watched some British channels that I'd never seen before. I think I watched a channel called Scuzz, which was awesome. It's like a like a like a rock metal uh, music channel, and I remember just sitting there, just thinking to myself, "This is just epic, man. This is absolutely awesome." All right, guys. Anyway, <laughs> that that was yeah, that was how I came to London from South Africa, and um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that story, man. It's really sweet, actually, reminiscing on that. Um, it's been a long time since I thought about that, but but yeah, guys, we have actually reached Southampton, which is awesome. And that means we can make our cement delivery and we are a little bit late it seems but we need to take this roundabout uh, to get into the delivery area hopefully we can you know actually park this trailer un you know in a non-noobish fashion because you know uh, it's been pretty bad the, the last few attempts at, at parking uh, the trailer so let's see if we can actually do this guys where is the actual delivery place though is it in here I think it's in here, right? Right. The coast is clear. There it is. Okay. Okay. Awesome. So what we're going to have to do, I think, <sighs> is come around like this, straighten out, then, all right. Okay. Um, then what we need to do no, the other way, the other way. Okay. <laughs> I think what we need to do is straighten out a little bit more. Like this, right? Okay. Now, we straighten the wheels. There we go, there we go. Just jack it, jackknife it a little bit more. Straighten the wheels. Okay, now what we need to do is straight, straight, straight. Okay, sweet, 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 sweet. Now we just need to straighten out. Okay, okay, sweet, sweet. A little bit more, a little bit more. Okay. <sighs> now, let's straighten out like this. No, 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 oh man. I thought I had it there, but... Okay, here we go, Simon to get it out. Here we go. No, turning the wheel the wrong way. Okay, almost, almost. But what we can do now is actually get the oh, get the trailer aligned with. Here we go. Okay. Okay. 
I'm feeling much more in control of this whole um, process now, actually. <sighs> Come on, baby! There we go. This has got to be it, right? This has got to be it. That's it! Oh, come on! Oh, come on! You... No! That is it, man! I think we've got to get it a little bit... Get it right to the back there, right? Here we go, here we go. This is it, this is it. hi -oh! Yes! Excellent! Oh, that was awesome. That was such an awesome parking. So much better than last time. Sweet, dudes. That's awesome. We got £3,479 for that delivery. We did get a fine, though, which sucks. But we are now level 3, which is awesome. And I don't know if that has unlocked a new thing for us. Yes, it has. Okay, awesome. Uh, we've got one more unassigned skill point. I think I'm going to carry on going on eco driving. Rank 2 gives us 15% of fuel saved when driving with the trailer and 15% of fuel saved when driving free. So that's really good. I want to get eco driving up to full as soon as possible. Um, and then that's going to be an incremental saving throughout the course of the game. If you guys uh, pick, if you if you're picking up what I'm putting down up in here, <laughs> so I'm going to put one in, into eco driving. I think and that is awesome. Yes, epic. That is awesome. Oh, guys, this has been so sweet. I'm so proud of that parking, and uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode of Let's Play Euro Truck Simulator 2. In the next episode, I guess. We are um, carrying on with this delivery, or we're going to take a, a new delivery. What actually is what is our new goal over here, man? Um, the bank can help us grow. Oh, they, they just want they just want to put us further and further into freaking debt up in here, man. Damn, son. Uh, but in the next episode, guys, maybe what we'll do is look at um, applying some upgrades to our truck and see maybe if there's anything else that we can do. Um, we can adjust the cabin and stuff too, so that is really cool. So we'll have a look at that stuff. But guys, thank you so much for watching this episode, man. If you enjoyed it, you hit that freaking like button. And you know what? If you guys have done something similar to me, if you've moved countries or you you had a really big change in, in your life, I'd love to hear about it, man. Hit me up in the comment section below. I love reading um, stories from the cyber dogs in the comment sections, man. It always makes my day. It's so freaking awesome. Guys, thank you so much for watching, man. This has been Rain Dog Play. Euro truck simulator dose we'll see you in the next video goodbye my friends